Hello everybody and welcome back to Animal Crossing City Folk! Today, I can't really see a whole lot. I mean, if I look at my monitor, I can tell this flower needs watered. I'm just gonna have to keep glancing back and forth between my monitor and TV. Um, just every group of flowers, this one needs watered. Because, once again, my TV's colors are going. Uh, I, I, I know I complain about that a lot. But it is really annoying. Because it's like, well... I can't really... Reliably do things. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Oh, there's a thing on the bulletin board. Probably Nook having another special. Yep, so if I PM there is a limited time, fifty percent off everything sale. Hey, it is after five PM. We could actually take part in that sale. Oh, this flower needs water. I think I missed. I think I just watered the water. It's a very nice thing to do for the water. I mean, it could use being watered more. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. Right, we had the shovel out, and I was just confused. That's what was going on there. Okay, these ones are good. Um, yeah, I... I know I talk about Fire Emblem a lot. You might be able to tell I'm a pretty big fan of this series. And I actually want to talk about uh, New Mystery of the Emblem, which is the game that was never released in North America for the DS. Like the regular DS. And just how good its hard mode is. Like, for comparison's sake, I'm basically comparing it to Fire Emblem Awakening. Where hard mode, really the only thing that makes it harder is reeking boxes cost a little more, so you can't use reeking boxes to level ground where you want, but you can still just summon in DLC teams for free and level grind on them constantly with no real repercussions and yeah it's hard mode there is just kind of lame lunatic on awakening is an exercise of frustration for any of you who haven't played lunatic on awakening um Basically, the tutorial chapters before you gain access to uh, the, the DLC stuff. So basically, the prologue and chapters 1 to 3 are basically a game of are you going to crit or are you going to lose? And you have maybe a 5% chance to crit. Is that a... Yeah, my, my monitor says it's a mushroom. There we go. Are these flowers... This one looks wilting. It might not be, but it looks wilting on my monitor and looks like it's the same as everything else on my TV. So... But yeah, like, that that's how it works with... Um... Awakening. Meanwhile, hard mode on New Mystery of the Emblem is basically... All of the enemies through the prologue have the same stats they have on normal. The difference is... Well, I suppose... I think they have slightly higher stats, but it's not high enough to matter. The main difference is they'll have better weapons. So they'll have steel weapons before you, and by the end of it, they will have a few silver weapons. Which, as I'm sure you'll all agree, before the end of the tutorial, seeing endgame items, well, weapons on characters, is a little intimidating. Let's be honest. But, with their stats not being a whole lot higher, they're not very likely to actually connect with the silver weapons, considering the only silver weapons they have are silver axes. Axes in Fire Emblem have notoriously low accuracy, and that is exemplified when you hand a big, heavy axe, like a silver axe, to a weak unit. So, in a way, hard mode is still a 
challenge of luck. I mean, you get unlucky, you will probably still lose. But, oh, mush furniture. That was just a mushroom, but it was really a mush bed. We've had so many of those, it almost hurts at this point. But, um, you stand more of a chance with New Mystery of the Emblem. And that, to me, goes a long way. Wait, is that a... Yes, that is a dig spot. It's probably just a gyroid I missed from yesterday, but yep, it's a gyroid. Look at that. They have a mega dingloid. We already have one of those. Like, I've even played the Lunatic difficulty, and albeit the tutorial is still very difficult, enemies once again get weapons a lot sooner than you do. And really, it does take a nearly a custom built, you know, a predetermined avatar character, and to use that avatar character for just about everything to get through it. Mostly because the prologue, until the final chapter of it, it really doesn't matter if anyone dies. Even if you're playing on classic mode, it doesn't matter because it's all training. You're becoming a knight. You're in training for that. They're not going to kill you. Um, I mean, the final chapter, yeah, because, well, those are assassins. They want you dead. And I think also the fourth prologue, which is when you're fighting bandits. You can, you, you can actually lose people there. But there's a similarity between both chapters. A, you can leave basically everybody behind in both of them. And the enemies also tend to not have a lot of movement. Okay, my pockets are full, so I just put the sea bass back. And what I mean by that is not many of them will just actively move. Like, in the chapter with the bandits, if you don't move, the enemies won't. There is none of them within range of you at the start of the mission. Um, the final prologue chapter. There will be some thieves that'll move, and if you have a rather low defense character, they might die. So be, you know, aware of that. But other than that, none of them are going to move. You can approach them at your own pace. If you do it right, you can actually take on every enemy in there one at a time. Which makes them a lot easier. But... You don't have to just sit there and rely on crits all the time to win the early chapters. I mean, if you did, I honestly wouldn't blame people for disliking Shadow Dragon and New Mystery of the Emblem. Because, well, that's a little BS. But people put up with it with Awakening, and I don't get it. Well, I kinda do. And it's because immediately after, you know, you get through Chapter 3, which will probably only take you a few hours, um, you can just immediately start level grinding, and then Lunatic becomes a lot easier. Because, well, the enemy stat caps are still the same, and you can summon in enemies to fight according to whatever level you're at, and you'll probably be fine. I mean, if you have some of the DLCs, you literally have endless money as well. So, like, the game isn't really challenging, it's fake challenge. Much like the challenge that comes from fighting Inner Agent 3 in Splatoon 2. It's not a real challenge, it's fake challenge. You're not being tested as to your just straight-up ability. You're being tested at... I 
background looks different. Yes, that is another fossil. I think. Oh yeah, this actually is a fossil. It's under a palm tree. So it should be a rather exotic fossil, though. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> it. Eh. Eh, there we go. Um, but like, you're being tested at your ability to beat a cheating AI. Is all you're being tested on. You know, can you recognize the patterns in this AI well enough to beat it? That's the Inner Agent 3 fight. Once you've done it once, you can probably do it again. Because the challenge is fake. And really, there isn't much of it there once you have the fight down. I mean, yeah, you can still get screwed up by, you know, a random auto bomb deciding it doesn't want to explode when it would normally explode. Seemingly, anyway. It was probably exploded right when it was supposed to, it's just it didn't seem like it because you didn't notice when it was thrown. But, like, that's not challenge. That's, well, the game cheating to create a challenge. When I think of, like, a challenging AI in, like, a shooter game, I think back to Perfect Dark on the N64. Where, yeah, if you gave the AIs different types, so like a turtle sim would have a really tough shield and would move slower. They, the AI is technically cheating, but you could just have a generic AI of that type. So you want, say, to fight a perfect sim? Go right ahead. Fight a generic perfect sim. And they will do exactly as the name implies. They will do everything perfectly. I would have used Dark Sim as an example, but Dark Sims are actually easier to beat because Dark Sims try to lead their shots and you can just zigzag and they'll never hit you. Uh, Perfect Sims will shoot for you wherever you are. That is part of their thing. They aim perfectly for you, not where you're going, for you. Meaning you can still beat them because you just have to be moving so much that they're going to miss because they're aiming for you, not where you're going. But I mean, that is how you do a difficult, but still balanced AI. Because the AI isn't any better than a player could be. It's still constrained by the same mechanics. Like, you know, the, uh... The, the, the prologue AIs in Awakening are not constrained by your same, you know, existence, basically. They are stupidly strong for the sake of making it basically require crits. Like, it's honestly a little ridiculous. I mean, the same could, in fair fairness, be said about New Mystery of the Emblems Lunatic Mode. But... Theirs doesn't require endless amounts of luck to win. Theirs just takes careful planning and strategy. And, of course, building your characters so that they can actually do what you need them to do. Um, it basically equates to the, the developers intended you to build the most godlike create a character for lunatic. That's kind of the point. The prologue also until the final chapter, and I believe also chapter four, the bandit chapter, doesn't punish you for failing. And yeah, I will definitely swap this out with one of my four horse mac three horse mackerels. Thought I had four. I only had three. Doesn't matter, they're not even really worth a hundred bells. Um, but like, you know, you get that compared to, well, once again, Awakening, where 
you don't have, you know, you don't get that 2% crit, well, tough, you're gonna lose then. Because your character dies, they're dead. You wanna play Lunatic Classic Mode? That's probably about the only way it's, you know, any fun. Like, I, I know I've been harping on that for a while, but, like, it's it's just frustrating to me. Because, well, when I first got Awakening, I thought, you know, I, I've been playing Fire Emblem forever. I, I'm pretty confident I can take on Lunatic. So I gave it a shot. And I spent the first nearly two days I owned the game stuck on chapter one because my characters were not critting when I needed them to. There was no strategy involved. It was they were not critting when I needed them to, nor were they blocking hits for each other when I needed them to. Th that's what it boiled down to. And that made me go, okay, I want to at least play this game. I'm going to start a game on hard. And hard was pitifully easy in comparison. Like, I I still have my original hard save. And I'm nearly at the end of the game, and I've yet to have any difficulty. Quite honestly, most battles are taken care of by a single pairing of units. And that's uh, my pan who is currently a griffin rider, and... Keelum was his name? The gen the knight that everyone can't see for whatever reason. He's there to give her the extra defense from him being a general, and that is it. That's all he exists for, to buff her. He's also married to her, thus he has a really good chance of just blocking a hit for her, and, you know, no damage being done. And she just flies around the battlefield, whacking people upside the head with an axe. Like... That's just how it goes. There's no real strategy to it, I'm just throwing her around the battlefield, because, well, she's mostly stat-capped. I say mostly, because there's still a few stats that she doesn't have terribly high stats in. I think the two right now are, um... I think she's not capped on magic, because of course she wouldn't be. She's in a physical role, and I literally don't think she can even become a mage unit. And I think luck. But even then, her luck is still higher than most others. And... I honestly don't see a reason to ever make her a Tangrel again. Because the Griffin Rider has more movement and gets the job done all the same. I basically use DLC characters, fighting them, to keep everyone else leveled up and caught up to Pan. And that's how I roll. She's literally to the point where... I think I'm on chapter 21. The archers from chapter 20 were dealing two damage to her with their bonus damage. Hey, darling. Do you have any interest in this tape deck? Gotta go fest? Trying to clean my place up? Yeah, yeah, I'll buy it. But, like, that should almost never happen. Not until, you know... Well, quite honestly, it does actually happen eventually with flyers in Fire Emblems. But usually it's not that extreme by what I'm assuming isn't even... You know, I'm assuming I've still got like six to eight chapters to go before I'm, I've beaten the game. Like, usually you'd expect that to only really start to come into play on the final chapter. 
if even then, because that's supposed to be a weakness of flyers. Now I'll admit, like a, a Pegasus Knight and their class ups usually can ignore wind magic, and Falcon Knights, not Falcon Knights, uh, Waven Riders and their class ups can usually ignore arrows by their by the time they've reached twenty. Well, by the time they've reached technically forty. Because you tend to always take them from 1 to 20, and then 1 to 20. And they get stat caps for each level up. Not stat caps, but like stat ups from each level up, so, you know. And Waven Riders are usually the more defense focused, and Pegasus Knights are usually the more resistance focused. But like, it's, it's a little ridiculous. Like, even magic doesn't really affect Pan because she has really good resistance growths for being a Falcon Knight. Not Falcon, Griffin Rider, which is a branch of Wavern Riders. If I remember right. Hey, I, I, I don't... I don't get it. Uh, just getting thumbnail, hopefully. And now I'm just gonna head up here to bed and I'm gonna stop ranting now. So with that, I would like to remind everyone I do have a Patreon, should you wish to throw money at my face. It'll help improve the channel if you do. If you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. I'm just happy you watched the video. With that said, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time for more Animal Crossing City Folk. See you all then.